While I am cleaning the dishes off another table, I hear someone at my mother-in-law's table say something unbelievable. Are we really allowed to eat out of this for free? Huh? What did she just say? Of course, my son's wife runs this place, so you can eat as much as you want. Oh, the wine bottle is empty. Angela, bring us another bottle of wine. I head straight towards the table where she sits. I cannot give out free food. I have to tell her. My name is Angela, and I'm a 35-year-old chef. I recently opened my own restaurant. After graduating from culinary school, I trained at various restaurants, and finally made my dream come true. However, this is not the goal. It is only the starting point for me. Being the owner chef and managing my own restaurant means that I have all the responsibility to make sure that customers continue to come here. In any case, I'm thrilled to be able to finally open my own place. I'm going to put my all into it. That was what I thought. Hmm? An opening party for the restaurant? Yes, that's right. You should be grateful, you know. I'm going to call many of my friends for you. Okay, thank you. Um, when you said many, how many exactly? Maybe thirty, including myself. Thirty? If there are going to be so many, you have to reserve the whole place. Of course, that will be fun. We'll have a big celebration. I'll even let you know the date. Mm, okay. This sudden call from Susan, my mother-in-law. I should be grateful for a reservation of thirty people, but the problem is that the call is from Susan. She loves all things luxurious, but never tries to pay things herself. That's why she comes to our house often to have dinner with us. She wants to eat for free. When I just got married to my husband Bob. Susan invited me to go shopping with her. I was thrilled for the invite, because I thought this is my chance to become close to my mother-in-law. Oh, this bag is so cute! What do you think? Do you like it? Yes, I think it looks great on you. You think so? I'll have to buy it then. Oh my! I've forgotten my purse, Angela. Can you lend me some money? I'll pay you back later. Hmm? Please, this bag might be sold out the next time we're here. Well, that may be true. As Susan was so persistent, I ended up paying for the five hundred dollar bag. She also invited me to lunch after that, and of course, I paid for the lunch as well. It's been two or three years since then. But she still hasn't returned any of this money. I've reminded her several times, but each time she just says, "I don't have it now," or "Next time." That's why whenever she invites me to lunch or shopping, I say I'm too busy with work. Susan irritably replies, "You should come once in a while, you know." But I don't care. I can tell that she is obviously only trying to get me pay. I've kept my distance with her like this, but as I said, she keeps coming to our house and has dinner with us without a care in the world. You really are a proper chef, aren't you? All of your cooking is so delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my, we're out of wine. Don't you have any more? I'm sorry, Susan. You're the only one who drank most of it. You knew I was coming, so you should have prepared at least two or three bottles. Excuse me. Susan is here to eat for free, and on top of that, she makes this unbelievable request. If it was just me, I could say no to her. But the tough part is that my husband Bob takes her side. Hey, Mom's right, you know. Mom is a guest to you. If you're a chef. You should be conscious of things like that. Go and buy some more wine right now. 
I had no idea where he is coming from. Of course, I stand up to them when necessary, but when he feels like too much work, I gave in to get by. I used to think Bob was so great. We met on a blind date. He worked at the leading corporation and was always so full of confidence. As a chef, having to pave the way for myself, it's natural that I'm drawn to someone with confidence. And in Bob's case, you can see the results, as he's working in a leading company. And I believed he was a man who was not just talk. I did kind of feel like he was sometimes slightly unreasonable. But I thought of this as a characteristic of a successful man who was paving the way for himself. We started to go out and ended up getting married. But at home, he would often complain about his work. He would say something like, "No one sees my true talent, and my boss is so awful that I get blamed too." His complaints didn't seem reasonable, and I wasn't buying it. It's true that you can't see someone's true colors while you're only dating, and that you find out a lot about them after you're married. It would be okay if it was just complaining, but about six months before I open my restaurant, he quits his job. I can't work at a company where they won't see my true talent. There are other companies where I can show my true potential, he says. I've never worked in the company, so I don't know how these things work. What I can do is to trust him and hope he finds a good new job. Anyway, I'm already preparing for my own restaurant, so I don't have time caring for my husband. However, six months pass and Bob is still unemployed. None of the interview seems to go well. I'm busy with preparation for the opening, so I haven't heard how things are going recently. But I'm not sure if he's even going to the interviews anymore, which means Bob is eating for free too, just like his mother. So you can imagine how frustrating it is for me when he has a strong attitude. And finally, the day of the so-called opening party is here. Susan arrives with a huge smile on her face. She has her twenty-nine friends with her. Well, Bob is there too for some reason, so it's her twenty-eight friends to be exact. Angela, thank you so much for this. Um, okay. What does she mean by thank you? If she's referring to me serving good food for her friends, of course I will. However, if she's saying thank you, please serve the food for free, that's another matter. Today's reservation is for dinner, so it's much more expensive than lunch. Dinner for thirty is going to add up to a quite a lot. I become nervous, but I serve all the orders that are coming through. Whoa, everything is so delicious. The place looks great too. You can tell that a lot thought was put in. It makes me very happy to hear these comments, but it irritates me that Susan says, "I know, right?" Every time someone says these compliments, as if she owns the place. We're halfway through the evening, and while I'm cleaning the dishes off another table, I hear someone at my mother-in-law's table say something unbelievable. Are we really allowed to eat all of these for free? Hmm. What did she just say? Of course, my son's wife runs this place, so you can eat as much as you want. Oh, the wine bottle is empty. Angela, bring us another bottle of wine. I head straight towards the table where she sits. I cannot give out free food. I have to tell her, Susan. I'm not serving this food for free. What on earth are you saying? I've brought all these people here, so you should show gratitude. That doesn't mean you can eat for free. But Bob takes Susan's side as well. Hey, will you stop trying to embarrass my mother? You just listen to her today, okay? What do you mean today? Have you forgotten that you owe me? Who was it that covered part of your startup capital? 
that has nothing to do with this. Anyway, there's still so much food that we've ordered, so you hurry up. With this, she sends me back to the kitchen. Is everything all right? Doesn't your daughter-in-law know she's serving us for free? No problem. Don't you worry. I hear Susan saying to her friend, "It seems the friends are going to understand." We go through dessert, and everyone seems happy with the food. Angela, everything tasted wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. That would be two thousand and seven hundred dollars. Huh? Hearing this, not only Susan but her friends seemed shocked too. You said we wouldn't have to pay today. Yes, I know, Angela. What is the meaning of this? It's wrong of you to ask us to pay. You're the one who's wrong, Susan. Reserving the whole restaurant and serving thirty people for free. Do you think any restaurant will agree with something like that? You're going to pay every single penny. Angela, stop it! What are you doing? Can't you tell that you're troubling mom? I'm the one who's in trouble. Anyway, how can you come at me with such a strong attitude? You're not even employed. What, Susan? Your son is unemployed? I thought you said he works at a large company and is going to be promoted soon. Well, um, you know, um, right now I'm、uh, recharging. Angela, don't you go embarrassing me as well. You're the one who won't even work. Angela, have you forgotten that you owe me? Oh, you? Yes, I financially supported you when you opened this restaurant. You have to thank me for that. I gave you ten thousand dollars, so you should at least pay me back with the two thousand and seven hundred dollars worth of food today. Okay, I understand. With this, I press a button and close the shutters. Angela, what are you doing? Why are you closing up the exit? I can't allow you to leave without paying. If you are not going to pay two thousand and seven hundred dollars. I'm calling the police. The police? Are you out of your mind? We're not getting involved with the police. Exactly. We only came because you said everything was going to be free. Susan's friends are drawing in on her, shouting. Angela, do something. Why should I? I never knew that you told your friends they would be allowed to have dinner for free. That's what I said. She didn't know. Well, this is just、um, anyway. Either everyone paid ninety dollars each, or you paid the full amount, Susan. Were you listening to a single thing I was saying? You owe me ten thousand dollars. You should be using today's bill to pay back some of that. As for that matter. I'm aware that none of that is your money, Susan. Excuse me. When I told your husband that I'm opening this place, he mentioned the ten thousand dollars as a present to me, and that you said you would hand it to me personally. But you said nothing about your husband, didn't you? You deceived me and made me believe I owe you money, so that you could eat all this food for free, didn't you? No, that's not what I. Hearing the truth, Susan's friends are glaring at her. You made me pay for dinner the other day and said I could eat today for free instead. I pay for the spa we went to together, and you said we would be even with this dinner. I paid for your concert ticket. The scarf you're wearing. Guess for the trip we went on. Coffee. Susan's friends all scream the things they paid for her. Well, maybe you can forgive her for coffee. Is my honest thought. Susan is turning blue and she begs me, "Please, I'll pay later. So may these people all go home." No, 
you have to pay right now. You said you pay later, but you still haven't paid for the five hundred dollars that I spent on your bag. Pay now, or we call the police. No, please! I don't have the money with me. How can you think I can pay so much in one go? Okay, then I'll have to ask your husband to bring the money. What? No! Please don't. He's going to be so angry. That's none of my business. If you can't pay, all we can do is call him. So we either call your husband or the police. Make your decision. No, no. Okay, then it's a shame, but I'm calling the police. Okay, okay. I'll call my husband, just not the police. In twenty minutes, her husband arrives. What on earth are you doing? I'm so sorry, Angela. I apologize for my wife's behavior. With this, he pays me the two thousand and seven hundred dollars. Please don't apologize. It's not your fault. With the payment settled, I open the shutters and let Susan's friends go. I'm so sorry for what happened. My apologies to you too. The food was delicious. I'll come again. Thank you. Please do. The only people left in the restaurant are my in-laws and husband. When will you stop? I'm so sorry. It won't happen again. Please forgive me. No, I'm not overlooking this anymore. I heard about the startup capital and how you're eating Angela's food all the time. The two thousand seven hundred dollars you made me pay today, and the five hundred dollars for the bag. As well as the amount you made Angela pay for lunch, you are going to work and pay all of it back. Please, no. Would you be able to say something to Bob as well? He's still unemployed. What, Bob? What is the meaning of this? Well, um, it's just uh, I can't find a company that's right for me. You. Got to be kidding me! You used my connection to get into that amazing company, and you wasted it, huh? Bob, is that true? Well, you never told me. You never asked. I can't believe it. I want a divorce. No way! You can't divorce me. Are you out of your mind? You were completely relying on Angela's income. Of course, she will divorce you. I demand you get divorced. Don't trouble Angela any longer. After a while, I start dating an editor for a magazine. They came to interview my restaurant. A few years pass, and we get married and have a child. I continue to manage my restaurant, and I'm living happily with my husband and child. What was the mother-in-law thinking? Food for thirty people for free? I'd like to see inside her brain and see what's going on inside. At least her husband was a good man. I'm happy for Angela. Not only did she safely leave her terrible husband, but I'm glad that she found happiness with her new life. I hope she continues to do well with her business too. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video, and see you in the next one.